Hi there, welcome to yet another issue of Gardener's World. And as you can see right away, I'm joined today by Pitch Marshmallow. And this is a special edition of Gardener's World because this week, Gardener's World does the Chelsea Flower Show. Pitch, is there anything you'd like to say? Have you got any thoughts? Can you give us some quick insights on what we're going to see today on the show? Yeah, thanks, um, Steve Dog. Thank you very much, Steve Dog. It is going to be a great show today. And as always here at Chelsea, we do like to go around some of the gardens and just see what the designers have come up with. So, first of all, first up, Steve Dog, um, I think we should go and look at some of these gardens and see why they've won the high accolades that they have indeed won. Yes, thanks, Titch. So there you go, folks. Let's get straight into the show. First of all, we're going to go to one of the gardens in Jersey Flower Show. Welcome to the Chelsea Flower Show and today we'll be looking at the Round Garden designed by Round Hound McRound and here is Monty Dog now who's going to give us a review of this wonderful garden. Hi and welcome to the Round Garden. Um, I think you'll agree that this is somewhere to behold and what the designer has done here, let's have a quick look around, what the designer has done is he's managed to create some edgings here and these edgings are very very well thought through. So what we've got here in this garden is a round edge and the garden designer has achieved this by using pebbles around the side and then he's encouraged growth such as for example the common dandelion around the side to punctuate the formality of the garden and let nature back in. Then this here is actually an artificial grass, um, some will, will call it astroturf, although normally very very much frowned upon. This adds a level of cleanness to the garden which is why this garden did get a silver Salva, silver salva received. It did not, however, receive the gold mark because of some random pebbles that um, were on the ground. But that is, in a nutshell, the round garden, and that's how it got its score today. So, um, back to you, Steve Dog. Thanks for that, Monty Dog. What a great little. Um, review of one of the great gardens at Chelsea that, um, that, that we've, we've managed to get this year. It's, it's just wonderful. Um, we want to now go to Titch Marshmallow, who's got something for you to do in the garden this week. You can do this while you're in lockdown. It's something that's going to be great fun for the gardeners, in fact, for the whole family. So Titch, over to you. What have you got on, in store for us today? Titch. Thank you, Steve Dog. Yes, you can see here that we've got an abundance of daisies on our lawn at the moment, and this is absolutely quite wonderful. And you can see as I, as I zoom in here, the clarity and the beauty of the daisy is something to behold. It's, it is quite remarkable. And I think for the early season pollinators, um, there's no hurry to cut these little puppies down, okay? Just enjoy them. So with that in mind, let's have a little closer look at what we call the daisy. So I'm just going to put a daisy here. Now you're not going to hurt the daisies by, by pulling off the daisy or even by cutting the lawn. You're effectively going to give them an early dead head and they will come back within three to four days. But here we have a daisy. And one thing that people just don't do enough now is make what we in the trade call daisy chains. You don't get this very often on gardening programs, but I'm going to show you now how to make a daisy chain. So what you need to do with a daisy chain is you need to 
form a hole in the um, in the stem is what we call it. We call it the stem, and you need fingernails to do this. But because Monty Dog and Steve Dog and and I, we um, we don't like to keep our fingernails long. What I'm going to have to do instead is use something instead to make that incision into that um, stem. What I've done folks, I've gone and got a cocktail stick. What I'm now going to do is snap that cocktail stick in half and it will give me a pointy edge. That pointy edge I can use to form a hole in the stem of the daisy. Voila, as they say in daisy world. Make the hole a little bit of an incision there. And then what you need to do is pick another daisy and that daisy then, the stem of daisy number two, which is the later daisy, goes into stem of daisy number one, which was the earlier or former daisy. Just remember that. Um, and then, this is easy to do, it only takes a moment. And then what you can do is, right, right, I've joined two daisies together. But what you really want to do ideally is make the cut towards the bottom of the stem, just showing you how to do that wrongly so you can do it correctly this time. So now if I make a cut to the bottom of this stem, Be careful not to stick the bit of wood in your finger. Now get a third daisy. This is daisy number three, so we've got one, two, three there. I will admit that the first daisy was quite tricky to put in there, but the second daisy was will be easier to put in. So after all of that. really easy to do. There. And so we have a daisy chain. Now if you look across the screen in a moment I'll show you, oh, look at the sparrow up there, how in the, that's part of being in nature folks, you can be nice and quiet with nature making your daisy chains this weekend. Um, please provide feedback below because it would be really great to see who's made the longest daisy chain. My daisy chain so far is three, okay? Let's see if you can beat that. Okay, let me use Steve Dog. Thank you very much for that, Titch. Now, it's been a great, um, great show so far. <laughs> I think you all agree, but neighbor's dog barking yet again anyway it's been a great show um, so far I think you'd agree but I've just received a very very important um, phone call because um, there's an inspector about to arrive um, here at Chelsea very very soon and we need to prepare for that inspector because it's not any ordinary inspector let me explain a little bit more here we can see our old friend, the Bug Hotel. And as with hotels, you have to make sure, oh, nearly fell over, you have to make sure that they are up to scratch and stuff, okay? So, um, that way they get a ticket. Get a ticket, they can remain open. So the hotel inspector is coming over today to hopefully give us a ticket. And that hotel inspector is none other than our old friend, Alan Gardner. 
Let's see what Alan's got to say about his bug inspection today. Thank you for that, Steve Dog. Now, as you can see, I am a trained hotel inspector and in order to be a fully and properly trained and certified hotel inspector, you need two things. You need a hat, which I've got. You need to put the hat at a slight angle, which I've done, so it's more than two things, isn't it, right away. You need a pencil over your ear and you need one of these. This is called a clipboard. So, with all these things in hand, I'm now gonna go over and have a look this hotel and we can then assess it for its fit for purposeness to run into the new season. Let's go and have a look at this hotel. Well here we are at the hotel and I think you'll find that it's got some great accommodation. I've had a good look inside and out and I did spend a night living in this hotel actually last night. Um, we cut that out of the editing of course to make the show a little bit more punchy and um, but it was a nice stay. Um, the accommodation was great. The facilities of the rooms were, they were limited and the rooms were a little bit smaller than I'd have hoped, but ideally they were very good. They were cleansed to the required standards. And therefore, because we want to call an end to this feature now because people are getting fed up, I give this hotel a five star hotel rating. So it's, it's got a certificate, which it can proudly put somewhere in here in here these slots here or in one of the rooms up there but it can proudly show that certificate going forward into the new season so it's a great pleasure and i am a very stern inspector for me to give this a full five star rating back to you steve dog <laughs> yes thank you alan great great news for the hotel it can maintain its trade in, into the new season five stars you don't get that at every hotel i can tell you anyway now we've got one thing that we do need to do because this is it's going to go over to um Tits marshmallow for jobs for the weekend over to you Titch. no let monty do this one monty monty dog over to you Thank you, Steve Dog. Great, great, great them. I'm getting this one. Now, my hair, as some of you will notice, has gone a little bit straggly and scraggly. And we're in lockdown, so a lot of people are struggling like that. But there's one guy who's struggling more than anyone, and that person is our good old friend, Dave the Shrub. So today, I'm going to give Dave the Shrub a stay-at-home haircut. He normally has his haircut at home anyway. Um, but let's see how we do that right now. So let's go and cut Dave the Shrub's hair. I'm going to narrate over this because I'm going to be going further away from the camera than right now. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me. So over to me, over there, with Dave the Shrub. Hiya Monty, I'm really looking forward to this haircut. It's going to be great. So advice from when you're cu for when you're cutting... Um, shrubs is to really make sure you get good structure as you go around the outside of the shrub we obviously have to make sure this is perfect but make sure you've got some good ladders because you might need those loppers like this mightn't just be enough so here we are with the ladders doing a thorough job <laughs> careful Monty it tickles but I reckon it'll look great Remember, when you're cutting your hair, or your customer's hair, you need a mirror so they can see what it's like from behind. And Dave the Shrub is no different here. Let's just make sure he's happy with this haircut. That's amazing, Monty. What a job well done. I'm so happy with that. Well, I think you'll all agree, that was a gr great job done. Davis Rubs happy and um, back to you Steve Talk. Hope you're enjoying the show folks and as you can see um, while I'm presenting this Titch back there look he's um, as you can see he's he's already working hel helpfully and gamefully on the garden but now we're going to go and look around a few more gardens at Chelsea. Is that okay with you Titch? Let's look around Chelsea.
lot of great rosettes and things being won there by the gardeners and some great design some melding some interfaces of design and ideas and nurturing the garden so just remember folks when you're in the garden this week take a little time to stop take a little time to reflect you're not going to have any hotel hotel inspectors hopefully coming into your garden over the coming weeks but if you do just remember if you do the right things at the right times then the right way to be will be at that perfect time tune in next week for more gardeners world yes i'll be back with monty dog titch marshmallow and all of our usual friends stay safe remember more than anything keep gardening